Greetings, my friend. Welcome to the secret shop. Hello, and welcome back to the Secret Shop podcast. I am your host, Simon. There's a reason for that. And joining me once again is Anger. Hello, Hello. Anger. Hello. <laughs> Happy to have you back. And since Neon is sadly missing today and will be for the foreseeable future, he has a very busy life currently. He has not given up on gaming. He has not given up on Artifact, guys. But currently, it's simply not in the cards. Instead, I am happy to introduce Kiwi. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Would Thank you, you like for to? Me. Very happy to have you. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit and tell the viewers what you do usually? Uh, hello, I'm Kiwi. I my favorite game is Artifact. I used to stream it a lot. I've not been currently, but I'm looking forward to in the near future. Very nice. And you have been winning a few tournaments in Artifact as well, haven't you? Uh, that's a slight overstatement. I did well, win Flax's Rainbow yes. Tournament, which is the most prestigious event so far. Exactly. And I've done okay. I'm mostly a draft player. It was the... One million tournament that everyone had been looking for. What was it? <laughs> Iranian... Iranian rubles or something? Yeah, Iranian rubles. <laughs> How much is that in dollars? Do you remember? Uh, I would have to check my Liquipedia page. <laughs> yeah, just look at the transaction, right? <laughs> How many dollars did I win back then? So, Anger, what have you been up to in this entire <laughs> year of the long, long haul? Yeah, I uh, I must admit, I stopped. I didn't stop long hauling, but I stopped streaming Artifact around a year ago with the announcement of the long haul because I didn't want to play it for so long and then grow tired of it. So yeah. I stopped streaming it for a while. And also, I was already a little bit tired of it. But then in September, I started streaming it again because I, I got a new outlook on it. And mm. I really just started seeing like what I truly originally loved about it after or, or before all the toxicity of everybody hating on it you know i i get very easily um uh, what's the word influenced by by other people's feelings um right. so uh but other than streaming a little bit i also make lore videos which i have been doing much more than streaming mm -hmm. uh about among other things artifacts but mostly dota 2 and a little bit on the arts yeah i mean since the long haul began, Valve actually released another Dota 2-based strategy game, which is Underlords. I've been playing that a ton, and I was actually surprised when 1.0 released how much lore there really was with the city crawl. Yep. But There's is a it lot good of lore? Artifact. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of artifact lore mixed in there, too. Yeah. Oh, and definitely. lots of the items from artifact have been ported into underlords as well yeah exactly it looks like legion commander is still alive yeah. mm -hmm. and it looks like so is rix looking for him those are just some law snippets that were relevant to artifact but there's lots more i can just recommend any listeners who haven't tried out underlords yet because they felt like oh no valve has abandoned artifact and now they're doing the auto battler thing Fear not. Finally, we have the confirmation that Artifact is coming back. And the update's going to be so big that they're even calling it Artifact 2 internally. It's probably not going to be called that. Like, they're not just going to skip to Artifact 2, I don't think. But that is how big the update is. I'm sure we're going to get to that in just a bit. Well, I... Haven't been doing much content creation, have I? I have been very busy with life as well. But much like Anger, I got enthused about Artifact after summer once again when the one-year anniversary approached. That is also when we did that awesome collaboration where both of us wrote and sang a couple songs, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
A bottle those of were water. really fun. <laughs> and those are also those are also hosted on your um, YouTube account, aren't they? Yeah. So those of you who have missed that in the joys of the long haul can go and check that out. But let's actually get into the news. Because I was surprised how much really happened in the last week. At first, there was just all this artifact stuff going on in the Edge magazine, which was mostly about Half-Life Alex, which released today. I've been watching a ton of that. Have you guys been checking that out, by the way, at all? I didn't grow up with uh, with um, Half-Life, so I've never really had a relationship with it. I've never really missed it, so I don't know. I, I haven't watched any of it. It doesn't interest me. Me neither, but I imagine we're the anomalies and most people have... Their, everybody that plays Half-Life or has played it is super passionate about it. Yeah. But I also know nothing about it. <laughs> no, nah, let's be honest. That's a boomer IP if I've ever seen one. <laughs> like, there's, no, there's been nothing new in, like, 10 years. <clears throat> like, what was it? 2007, 2009 episode 2 came out? Was it and nothing since then. But or maybe not. doesn't waiting make the heart stronger or something? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, right? We know about the long haul, but Half-Life fans... Oh boy. They're the they real long haulers. Been, yeah, th they have been starved for real. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, there was a lot of just toxicity towards Artifact, even just from Half-Life fans. I'm not trying to start any beef with them with this. I'm just saying that this is what waiting does to a person. Yeah. Like, they not just hate... Not specifically to Artifact, they hate everybody. Exactly. <laughs> they, yeah. they hated anything new that Valve was doing that wasn't uh, that wasn't Half-Life. And now yeah. they're getting Half-Life Alex and it's exclusive to VR, so... What At do you the... think of that decision? Like, first of all, okay, let me just go on a little tangent. First of all, they announce a new game, a sequel to a game that was like 10 years ago, and then, or more than that even. And then second of all, they release it on VR. So they're only catering to boomers who might have given up on gaming at this point because they're at least 30 <laughs> years old and then they make it VR which almost nobody owns well my opinion on that is that the Half-Life series like beyond its lore, beyond the story or even the gameplay has always been about innovation like the very first Half-Life game was about like putting story into first person shooters like, before that, there was, like, Doom and Wolfenstein, and you just put right into the action. There's a demon, shoot it. There's a Nazi, shoot it. Mein Leben! <laughs> but now, you actually had NPCs, like, hiding in trash bins and talking to you about, oh my god, the military's coming, uh, we're gonna get saved, I'm sure, and, like, NPCs fighting alongside you, and so on. Like, the AI, what they did with that. Um, and Half-Life 2 was about, like, the source engine and the physics interactions. Like, actual, realistic physics. If you have never seen it, I recommend that you go to YouTube and look up the Half-Life 2, like, gameplay reveal that they did back then. Because they show off some basic bitch shit that we are so used to today and the audience is fucking creaming themselves. Like, literally, a can falls off a table, and they're like, oh, <laughs> it <laughs> fell realistically. Seriously, it, it is a treat to watch, simply because it's so basic today, because all the games are doing it, but they were the first. That's, like, the point. And I think that is exactly what Half-Life Alex is to this generation. Because Valve is sure that the industry is moving towards virtual reality. And they want to be at the forefront of that. But and is Half it Life really, Alex, though? Yeah. Not well, everyone I is going to have so. enough room to have VR in their apartment. Like me, well, I could never have VR. Even if I could afford it, it maybe, I don't have room for it. Maybe it'll be cheaper and more accessible in the future for yeah. Like yeah, how true. it is. Like... Um, 
they're also they're a huge company with lots of money so they can afford to take risks like that and if they're at the front of their at the front of vr gaming then it'll pay off in the long term and if not then it's a risk they're able to take yeah i think it makes sense for them it's like it's a little unusual that they're going into a different medium but it um i think it makes sense that they're evolving with the times yeah yeah. I mean, virtual reality even pushed them into producing their own hardware. Like, that is a huge jump for Valve to do. Before that, they only produced the Steam controller. And now suddenly they're going into all this head-mounted display stuff. And the touch controllers, like finger tracking, they're like super innovative with this. And they're at the forefront of this technology and Gabe always said he was jealous of Nintendo because they were always able to interweave hardware development with software development because they were mm -hmm. thinking about the games they were making while they were making the hardware that it would run on, like the Nintendo consoles with their Nintendo games. And now they're finally in a position to do that with their own Valve Index head-mounted display and now Half-Life Alex which was built with that hardware in mind. Is there other games that use the same hardware? Like, is uh, this projecting Valve releasing more games in VR in the future? Or do you think it rely, it um, will be dependent on how this one does? It's going to be the Artifact VR. We're going to have <laughs> real, about it, real Duel uh, Masters yeah. and Yu-Gi-Oh! games. <laughs> Where you the mean, monsters actually pop out of the cards in VR. Don't you mean V artifact? Yeah. <laughs> or A yeah, artifact. Exactly. Augmented reality instead of VR. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, they would look into at least doing like a VR mode for the next updates to Artifact. How difficult is it to take a game that's already made and, and just regularly and make it a VR game? Is... Actually, uh, it's actually more difficult than you would think because it is not just about a different way of displaying the visuals. It is very much about controls and it is actually <laughs> very uh, difficult because you don't want people to get sick. Uh... Like you just need, I really recommend that you uh, guys take a look at Half-Life Alex gameplay because they do a lot of smart stuff. First of all, you don't have to have like a VR play space. You don't have to walk around in your room. You can play oh. it seated because there are several ways of movement. You can use the stick just like any controller. You can look into a direction and teleport instead of walking there or like zoom forward like a dash. There are several ways of doing it. Uh, it's not all about having the play space or something. But that is definitely, in in my personal mind, like if I, I want to save up for VR and I definitely want to have like a VR play space for it so I can actually walk around. Because much of that is what creates this feeling of being there, which is called presence, like this feeling of presence. Uh, mm -hmm. Something that many people don't actually get yet about VR is the feeling that you get when you are actually immersed in it because it actually really tricks your visual uh, perception and makes you feel like you're there. It's not just like looking at a screen, like normal gaming. But I think most people that are rude about VR haven't actually tried it and had that feeling of immersion. Yeah, very I've much tried so. It. I've tried it a few times and I always get motion sickness. I just, I never get motion sickness, but for some reason in VR, it just triggers something. That I, I just get it. I yeah. don't know what it is. Uh, they definitely still have to work on that a little bit. Um, I was actually watching a couple streamers today, the Valve Index just for this game, after trying different uh, VR headsets. And they said that they've had the least problems with sickness with the Valve Index, because most likely because it has a, a higher frame rate. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff that plays into people getting sick. And VR is still in the first phase. 
Like some people uh, say that, oh, with the finger tracking, maybe we are in uh, the second generation, but other people have like very futuristic ideas of what the next generation should look like. Um, but first of all, headsets have to get smaller and cheaper. That's the only way to mass adoption in my eyes. I'm sure that will happen though. Like yeah. if you look at any other technology, that's the, just tech, yeah. it happens. And so once there's a need for it, then other people will. Do you think yeah. the Omni will Develop. ever hit the mainstream market? Have you seen the Omni when they like go in a uh, round treadmill that goes? Oh my God! You mean that run around treadmill where you can turn and walk yeah. into different directions? Oh my God! That is that um, looks so and... cool. That's like if I was gonna ever be into VR, I would do that because that's to me like what it should be like. I get that. Yeah, but that is certainly just on the enthusiast level right now. <laughs> Because uh, much of VR is still on the enthusiast uh, level where you like spend a ton of money to get something. But what is even cooler is what Gabe Newell is looking at right now. Like he is living in the fucking future right now. He's already talking about jacking the game straight into your brains. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, guys looked at uh, the video posted by uh, IGN like the half hour interview or whatever that was but I, uh, I didn't get time to watch it yeah don't worry about it um gabe actually talks for a while about how uh, we're gonna jack into the brain soon and just play games straight to the mind basically like i'm putting it into like futuristic uh terms but he explains it much better and he explains about like making you feel cold is way harder than just making you see stuff which is interesting but mm. let's get to the things the most important things that gabe was talking about in those interviews because this whole newsweek started with the edge special for half-life alex and how uh, there would even be a little bit of news about artifact at first, people thought, oh, they're just going to talk about how it was a failure and now they're moving on. But it turned out to be the exact opposite. Gabe actually talked about how Artifact was an interesting failure. <laughs> Ouch. But that they're learning from that and that the uh, team behind Artifact has not given up and that they are indeed going to release a reboot of sorts a reboot that is so big that they're calling it artifact 2 internally what was you your reaction to this because i was having a nice quiet board game night with my girlfriend when this popped up on the screen and i shouted so loudly and suddenly that my girlfriend got the shit scared out of her <laughs> and then i just grabbed the fucking ipad and started tweeting without explaining anything and she's just well, what happened <laughs> so what how was your night when that happened mine was interesting well for me at least it started with somebody messaged me on discord and said artifact 2 and at first i thought oh somebody is fucking with me or just wants Please. attention or something or whatever but then I actually like s started looking around and realized it was real. And I just, I felt more and more like I was dreaming. Like I actually didn't believe it was true at first. Mm -hmm. And then when it finally sank in, I was actually, I didn't cry, but I was about to cry. <laughs> yeah, I remember you told me it felt like a fever dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was uh, going to wake up any moment. For me, uh, I, yeah, I just got on Discord and... Um, the long haul discord was pretty active. Everybody was back immediately for some good news. Um, I, it was just really nice to see them communicate in a human manner to us and say, Hey, thanks for your support. Um, just acknowledging us was really nice. Uh, my face hurt from smiling all day. <laughs> it, from my perspective, uh, they, They've always said the artifact was coming back, and we knew that, and I've always had mm -hmm. faith in that. Um, and so it doesn't really change anything. It was just a matter of when. But 
uh, it's really nice for everybody else that's not as confident in that. Um, and just to have news and that it looks like it's on the horizon in the near, potentially near future, um, is really nice. It's hard to know what this means and, uh, change is scary, but that's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to have content to work with and stream. Are you worried yeah. about the changes? Um, I think everybody is worried about the changes like but i as i've spent a lot of time playing dota and in dota they make changes that you're not always comfortable with and then they turn out to be okay and yeah. that's kind of what you're trained for and so um i'm excited to see whatever the changes are if i like them or dislike them isn't really relevant like i'll We'll see how it goes and make opinions on it in the longer term. I'm yeah. just excited Agreed. to have, like, I'm okay with Artifact in its current version if there were players for it, but um, this means that there's going to be a player base, and that is really nice. Having people to share your passion with is important. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I think you're making a very good point about um, uncomfortable changes. Um for me, the recent changes to uh, Dota 2 when it comes to the neutral items were very controversial. I actually didn't play the game until they um, changed that around a little bit, which is unlike me. But for some reason, like the neutral items and how everyone was just filling up the inventory with those uh, was uncomfortable to me. Oh my god, new stuff. <laughs> um, but when I saw... Like, even before I saw this post, I was having conversations with uh, people about, do you think there will be a lot of gameplay changes? Or do you think they're just going to tackle the economy, the cards, the card market? Are they going to change just a couple things about RNG or the arrows? Um, but I always said that when they're taking this much time to make changes to the game, it will be like fundamentally different. It will likely be a very different game when it comes out, but I will be okay with that as long as it is a better game when it comes out from the long haul. I think that's how most people would feel. But in the end, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people complaining either way whenever they change anything. But the truth is, like the truth of, um, of the matter is that as the game is right now, it is not very popular. No. Nope. And, yeah. Uh, and we have to admit to ourselves that we are just a bunch of crazies who somehow fell in love with something that the vast majority of people is just not really vibing with. And hopefully this update will change that and we will have a... Uh, larger community to share our passion with. I just hope that they don't change the feel of the game, to, so to say. Like, we still want to want to feel like we're still playing Artifact, right? We still want mm -hmm. to feel like this is a card game that we're investing our time into. Because I doubt that, like, no matter what changes they make, I'm sure it will still be a card game, basically. For sure. I expect that, like, what are the deepest uh sorry what are the most intricate details that are in, that are uh like innate to artifact like what aspects of artifact do you consider are necessary for it to feel like artifact for me i think like the three lanes will always stay artifact is unique because yeah. of the three games yeah uh, the three lanes um and but beyond that what sort of details are unique to Artifact or are necessary for Artifact? The for me, end. I really like the the fact that you have five heroes that aren't like normal cards. You always have them and deploy them. You don't have to actually draw them from your deck. I really like that. So I, I, I hope they make it still a MOBA card game, you know? I really think that's that's so unique and cool. Mm -hmm. When Artifact first came out, I was I really liked that the game felt so much like playing like for many people mm. they for many dota players they don't feel that way at all but mm. um like how the heroes match up or how 
you're if you're weaker in one lane then you become stronger somewhere else mm -hmm. or if you're losing early then you get a whole bunch of deploys and you can go turn things around and like those aspects of the game um feel very much like the moba and i expect that it may become even more that way but the game is a card game in essence i believe yes like, the goal is not to mirror dota it's its, its own for sure yeah definitely there's always going to be like the dota flavor and for one i don't think that it will actually lose out on depth of strategy for example because that is also part of artifacts calling card right it was always going to be it was always meant to be the more competitive the more strategic deeper card game and even though i'm sure that they're going to make it more accessible i don't think that it's going to be an you know quote unquote easier card game for I sure think, yeah i think accessibility is probably the largest issue that it had initially and that was something that they overlooked because of dota's success even mm. in its inaccessibility by inaccessibility um, do you mean the fact that you don't own the cards at the start no sorry i meant not in a not even in a financial aspect but in the complexity and how difficult it is mm. to get into um like the i learning think curve. one of yeah one of the biggest issues with artifact initially is that it didn't have a good way to to guide you in what were good decisions or bad decisions and so then people shift their focuses onto things like arrows and get upset about rng and things that aren't actually large that aren't impacting the game in a huge way um, this is actually a point that i would like to elaborate on because the arrows have absolutely dominated the conversation about artifacts design Whenever people talk about Artifact, they will always mention not only the economy, but they'll always mention RNG and how frustrating the arrows are. And they'll always have some anecdotes about that one flop, that one arrow screwed over their entire strategy. Okay, but Simon, be real. Both of us complained about it too. Like Yes. <laughs> Yes, I will. It's not that. like we're saints who never complain about oh the my, arrows. Yeah, oh my God, those people, nah. <laughs> no, I I definitely have those uh, same complaints in many ways. Like, I'm only now, like, when it comes to RNG, I'm only now moving to a healthier mindset when it comes to Underlords. I used to rage at Underlords way more than anything else, even Dota. And I used to rage at Artifact as well, I'll admit that. Because I've had those anecdotal uh, games where that one arrow screwed me over because I took a risk. But I think on the inside, you know, I know that in the, the RNG doesn't matter that much. Otherwise, there wouldn't be people who always float to the top if it was like entirely RNG or something. But that is why I want to have your input on this Kiwi. Okay. So as Anger said at the start of the um, podcast, that she really gets caught up in the emotions of those around her. And so I think that was the biggest issue with the, with the arrows. Um, so in the first week the game came out, I was like, I've been looking forward to it for ages. I was thrilled to be playing just got lost in it for a week and i checked in with one of my real life friends sure that he was going to be enjoying it as much too and i was so excited that one of my friends was going to be playing the same game as me and so i messaged him and he's like oh i played for two hours that game was stupid i wrote a terrible <laughs> review for it and i was just stunned i couldn't understand it because he's similar to me and things that he likes and um i was just really taken aback by it and that's when i sort of started paying attention to the community and realizing that this was a common thing that people were feeling and it was a very it, it was a theme that people would play two hours the game would feel bad and they'd write a bad review and quit and that was ultimately artifacts downfall immediately but why did this happen and so that's a much more complicated question and i don't really have a good answer for it i think that 
um, a lot of people that feel strongly about the arrows and still continue to post on the subreddit have played maybe 10 hours, maybe 15 hours, maybe they've played 50 hours. I don't think, I don't want to be elitist about it, but I don't think people that have played 50 hours of Artifact have a good Please understanding Please do, of you game. are the elite. <laughs> I'm, but, like, you want a game to be accessible for everybody. You want people who play it for five hours to enjoy the game for five hours. You don't want it to be Dota, where, I mean, I love Dota. I've spent far too much time in it, even if I'm not playing recently. And anytime somebody asks me, hey, should I get into Dota? My answer is always no, because <laughs> it, you, you have no idea what you're doing for 200 hours, maybe longer. Also, spent, Dota just makes you a bad person. <laughs> I spent literally a thousand hours with a friend getting them into Dota and a thousand hours with my brother, and that's how long it takes to get somebody into the mm. game. And so it's just, it's not nice. And we don't want that in Artifact either. Artifact isn't quite on the same scale, but it's still, it takes a while until you have any idea what you're doing because there's no indicators for what are good decisions and what are bad yeah. decisions. And so, I mean, I haven't even got to arrows yet, but the arrows feel bad. And so it's hard to know, like, I would say 70% of the player base expects that arrows will be something that has changed. And most of us that played in the long haul league and continued playing long term and got into the game competitively are not affected by arrows like those of us in the community that get upset by arrows are kind of looked down on by everybody <laughs> else because it's it's a it's a mindset thing above everything else yeah. but if you don't have different things to focus on and you don't have guidance then then it's very easy to have your mindset go there and when everybody else in the community is saying the same thing then you're you have um, like reinforcement of your beliefs. So I'm of the opinion that arrows don't really matter. They're very, um, I, I think they add a lot of flavor to the game and they make the game, they, they add complexity to the game that is necessary to the game being good. Um, you have your arrow and it has 50% to go straight and 25% to go left and 25% to go right. And so when you get a little deeper into the game and you know what you're doing and you know what all the cards do, then you start thinking about your deployments and you're like, if I go here and they curve me, what happens? Or every creep you deploy, you could play your creep in first lane, but you're like, well, it can actually impact middle lane if I do it with a curve. And so I'll take that 25% chance to get a small advantage mm. and say you're say your hero gets curved in a lane and you lose it for for free like their hero kills you then that's fine because you come back in two turns and so you get to di dictate the game differently people get very upset about like all the newest players think phantom assassin and bristleback are the strongest <laughs> heroes yeah because they hit really hard and they're scary and yeah but they're like among my lowest picked heroes because they're very one dimensional. They're not flexible. Um, I think they're only good with correct synergies. And so, but if you play a blue hero and it gets hit by Bristleback on turn one and he dies, then you're like, well, they got five gold and like early on or against new players, they'll just leave the game. And mm -hmm. yeah, it really doesn't matter. Like, one of my favorite matchups is Prelix, who is a 3-5 against Bristleback and very definitely dies. But if you get a Prelix alive in Bristleback's lane, you win that lane. Like one Br Prelix counters one Bristleback and many blue heroes are similar in that aspect. The Bristle can't do things. The other thing about arrows is they're always going to be hitting a unit. So if you curve, then you're either not doing the tower damage or you're not killing the unit that's actually in front of you or or whatever like every every action that is good is doing something else less sort of thing and maybe i didn't explain that very well but um i, I think you're is, trying i think you're trying to say that even though the arrows are redirecting things things are still happening like the damage is just being redirected 
but there's yeah, always so when going you have three, some, something going on. When you have For three sure. of the big Sundried Alphas hitting one creep, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're yeah. redirecting the damage. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, exactly. It's like how Thunderhide Alpha was um, like one of the highest win rate cards in the initial first week or two. <laughs> and then it went down to a below 50% win rate the longer the, the people played because people got better at using creeps to block and not just emptying their hand like curbstone or whatever yeah so yeah. um and different decks have different game plans and it's like big red units hitting very hard is very easy initially and intuitive and not hard to think about but later on you can win games when you're behind 50 gold gold is not relevant to some decks yeah. or things and so i think the biggest issue with artifact is not is that the the hive mind if you will got upset really early on and focused on the wrong things and the game never got a chance so that translates into what we expect changes in artifact 2 um makes it really complicated and difficult to know what is going to be changed are they going to address these things that were not fun for people or are they going to work around it by making tutorials and more statistics to show what mm. things matter or um, having like AI quest lines or things kind of like the Hearthstone um, adventures and that sort of thing where you get a more a better feel for the game or they even like looking at the um, the AI in Runeterra where mm. the AIs have many different game plans and you can see different different win conditions and concepts and right so if they had better base decks with game plans in early artifact to teach people then they would maybe understand things better i still see people coming back recently and they play two games and they're getting frustrated about details that don't matter at all mm. and it it's really difficult to see and even like they made this announcement this week and people came back and i'm playing games on ladder and Stomp. people are typing no i wasn't even but people are getting upset about things like like i used annihilate and i had to use it really poorly and this guy got so upset and started typing in caps just because i killed one of his heroes but it wasn't a good annihilate it put me in a worse position but i had to do it because i was losing and <laughs> people just they focus on the wrong details yeah yeah um, I think that is a very good point because in the end, I think people like who are highly skilled were always playing a fundamentally different game than the rest of us. Like Artifact is such a complex game that much of the strategy that you just touched upon is like completely unknown to the majority of the player base, which then stopped playing because they uh, couldn't get into that they couldn't get into the actual mind game the matter of the of artifact like the game that lies underneath and that's just really really sad to me you know? yeah um and i think that is what uh, richard garfield who has become increasingly unpopular in the uh, community uh, meant when he said in the interviews he wanted Valve to communicate more to the player what they were doing wrong, basically. I think he he wanted to do something that you mentioned just now, where maybe Valve would go into like the statistics and maybe educate people on what is actually important in the game. Like, what resources are actually valuable. Does it matter if that hero dies when you lose that valuable Annihilate that you only have like two or three times in your deck? But do um, people find that a fun way to learn though? Like doing it in a didactic exactly. way that, like that? I think that's kind of just yeah. damage control from Richard Garfield's side. He doesn't want to admit that he fucked up. And I agree with you that a game sh theoretically shouldn't require that kind of learning to find the fun in it 
basically. Sure. I, I agree that there should um, be some tutorial, at least to get yeah. a little bit better at the game, but I don't think you should have someone explain why yeah. your anger at the game isn't real. Like, if somebody is mad at the arrows, telling them, oh no, but you see, because the arrows are actually good for the game, you're just too mm. bad to understand it. Like, something like that wouldn't work. It is so, yeah, it is so interesting because there's all these psychological things going on which were bleeding into the community. Um, because when you get to the point where you're like, well, actually, you see, the arrows are actually super good. The, they add variety. And so, like, people felt patronized, too. For sure. They, like, wh what suddenly okay. they... I'll tell you what changed my mind from hating the arrows to yeah. not loving them, but, but like, I, I understand that they're a good part of the game. Like, I'm just not biased towards them anymore. And part of it was, uh, I think it was when I talked to you, Kiwi, and I think it was a little bit with Baby, to Baby Bok Choy, uh, where I was just explained things that I'd never thought about. Like, for example, how mm. everybody was mad at cheating death early on because it was oh, imbalanced. Yes, I see you're angry. But like Kiwi has, has told me, it's kind of balanced Annihilate. Now Annihilate yeah. is overpowered and it's... cheating death kind of balanced that. Small things like that and also regarding the arrows, actually explaining to me why it's not bad rather than, you know, just talking about why... That's that's what Richard Garfield did. He was just he was just saying that people are basically too stupid to understand it. People aren't too stupid to understand it. It's just, it, it's just a poor way it of explaining it. Well. Yeah, I think he I think he completely alienated himself from the community by communicating yeah. poorly, for sure. Like, I at the time he made those comments, I could read into them, but also he just fueled the fire. Um, what you brought up, anger, is that like we innately feel this way about things and so how how we feel about the game and it not being fun is necessary is is something to consider and so there's different ways to work around it and so having like more tutorials and statistics and stuff is one aspect of contributing to it but i think there's many parts that are necessary and so that's why i think the game is going to change fairly significantly um, because it wasn't fun for people, and so they acknowledge that and they want to change that. Yeah, it's hard to know what they're going to change and how, though. I think the very first thing that they need to focus on is the tutorial, as always. Like once again, the tutorial to Artifact only really explained what the different kinds of cards do, but that's like the absolute basics. It doesn't explain anything about like the deeper strategy of the game. It didn't even reveal the real game to anyone who tries to get into it. It must start at the tutorial with this new version of Artifact. So I think to summarize the arrows on a, like, on a conceptual level are not like chaotic evil. <laughs> um, but on an emotional level, they're just too frustrating. So I personally feel like no matter what the uh, arrows were trying to do with the game, so to say, um, I think they will be removed in Artifact 2.0, one way or the other. I doubt that. And if they are still there, they will be completely de-emphasized. Or there will be ways to re-roll them or something. But in the end, I think that people's emotions and especially those who would return to the game just have too many bad memories about arrows to really keep them. I feel like they have become too emblematic of uh, artifacts failure. Would you agree with that, or do you think that would you do you think they would make a return or just change them, or would they just make up a different mechanic that just looks different while doing the same thing? Personally, I'm trying not to speculate too much on what they will change and won't change because we know that artifact in its current version was unsuccessful, and so we want the game to have enough changes that people feel it's a different game. My take on it is why they're calling it Artifact 2.0 is that the game is significantly changed that it doesn't quite look like the initial version. Mm -hmm. And so it's not necessarily a big, it's not necessarily a huge game change. It's just the way that 
it's presented will be significantly changed in my ideas, in my perspective. So I think I expect gameplay to change and I'm not sure how they will do that. If the game is similar to its current state, I would expect arrows to still be there. But uh, the point you brought up about them being a token of how people view artifact is it is a terrible thing. And so that's also part of why it took so long for the game to be changed. The longer, the longer they wait to re-release it, the longer it's been and people can forget about their previous views of the game. Um, I'm, I th personally think that speculating on what will and won't be changed is not a great use of time at this point because we have no idea. We just know the game will change significantly. Everybody has their different views on arrows or on Annihilate or on yeah. any unique detail to Artifact. Um, right. I think, yeah, that's what I think. What about you, Anger? I actually think Tyler from Valve News Network, I think he actually posted a video about Artifact where he said some things are actually m most likely to be implemented. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but for example, with the arrows in his theory, if he, he, he is correct, then I don't think there will be any arrows that will be dealt randomly um, at the start of each turn. Instead, you would have to like do that with cards that change the arrows. Or right. something like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think he was talking about how certain types of cards will always go straight while others have a ch chance to uh, go somewhere else and then you still have a way to control that with cards. But most of that is still speculation. He says that it does have inside sources, but uh, there's a reason why he now puts like the extra speculation button in the corner of his videos. I'm definitely curious about it, but instead of speculating on gameplay changes, what then are your hopes for the future of artifacts? I would like to start with you, Anger. Like, what do you hope this uh, new update will bring like beyond gameplay changes? Just more players that love the game and just uh... A community that's not toxic and because i remember at one point on the subreddit no matter what was posted yeah. it would instantly get like 10 downvotes people people were refreshing new just to downvote everything no matter what it was and it that's was true. just bizarre how hateful people became just they didn't even play the game They're, the game they were playing were hating the game and so I just want to see an artifact where people love it, like like the way it is right now in LHL or, or in in the other artifact discourse. Now everyone is very kind about artifact, but it's so small. I want to see that yeah. in a on a big scale. How about you, Kiwi? What would you hope for the future of artifact? Um, I. I want there to be a player base. I want it to be competitive. I want there to be ranked and a leaderboard, ideally right from the start. Yeah. Um, but but those things are only important if there's a player base. So I I like the game in its current iteration, and I hope that they present the game well enough that other people can like it. I'm a little nervous for what they're going to change, and if I'll still like it, but I expect that I will. Um, and and it takes a while to settle into things and see what what is good. Um, I think that something we don't talk about enough is how unique and wonderful the um, like the tournament setup in game mm -hmm. is. Preach. Um, like lobby creation and the ability to make large tournaments of, well, we found that 108, 128 person tournaments got a little bit buggy, but <laughs> 64 person tournaments were wonderful. And the ease that you can set tournaments up and admin them and add people to them is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that you can just save a code and go look at the lobby anytime after. Like, uh, we can go look at all the Liquipedia pages of our little tournaments forever mm -hmm. because you just, you, 
copy a code and put it in and then you can go see everybody's deck lists and stats and everything it's it's wonderful no other game has done that and i'm i'm honestly really that no other game has poached that in this yeah. time mm. like um people talk about a lot a lot about different games of similar genres um copying details and i think a lot of that is just that there's only so many mechanics you can have and so there's going to be some overlap regardless of if it's uh unique or or not but no no game has the tournament system that artifact has and that really sets up the competitive side of things yeah. something else that i would really like to see is i'd like the game to be more easier to watch not mm. from the sense of as a player but as somebody who doesn't play yeah. like artifact really has potential to be an esport with how competitive it is and how variable gameplay and game plans can be um especially like well from my perspective as a draft player i can go and look at say who i think are the five best draft players and everybody has many different drafting and play styles that they utilize but also they have unique ones to themselves that other people don't use like there's so much variance in how you can play the game and and kind of an upside to there being no guidance is that you don't know which person's way is best you just know oh that person's scary i don't want to play them hmm. and so um it's uh i got a little sidetracked here um no, it's good it, it's really interesting in that way um <laughs> the the issue is the game is not fun to watch if you haven't played it you literally can't yeah. understand the game if you haven't played the game and so it's not fun to watch at all um and so that makes it not viable as an esport because if we look at other games you can not play dota or league or even chess and you can enjoy watching you can enjoy watching it but i have friends who've watched 100 hours of my stream and still have no idea what our effect <laughs> is or we can think to back when we had clips from um whatever wherever they showed off artifact the first few times and Packs. everybody was excited yeah so the clips from PAX and people were just trying to understand it and i mean for myself personally i had no idea what was going on and you just can't really grasp the game at all until you've played it so so to go back what i would really like to see in artifact 2 is that somehow it's possible to watch it and enjoy it or to watch it and start to comprehend the game and like like you can ideally for a game you should be able to watch it and if you put enough time and understand the game even if you couldn't replicate it mm -hmm. but artifact is not it's not currently viable to watch if you have not played the game at all and i think that is an issue yeah i and think I that's no very idea. true i have no idea how they would address that and i don't know what to do about it but that would be cool i think for one thing they would have to change the uh camera and the layout of the board because i think the reason why some people especially the spectators from like big streamers who were just commenting in the twitch chat Things that, because I actually went back and watched like people's super old, uh, one year old uh, broadcasts because I was really interested in uh, people's actual first reactions. And a lot of people reacted to the th uh, three lanes in a negative way because as a spectator, you don't have the state of the other boards in your head like a player does. Mm. So unless the streamer is constantly switching between these boards, you don't actually know the state of the game overall. I think they would have to change the way that uh, the camera and the lanes look so that it is easier for a spectator to actually understand the overall state of the game rather than just being focused on the one lane that the camera is currently focused on. At least that would be like my, you know 
first idea now that you mention it, basically? Um, so I actually did lots of casting with all of the events for about mm -hmm. a year. And uh, you definitely notice uh, that casters can make a big difference by yeah. just paying attention to the details and stuff. But I don't think like that helps for sure, but I don't think that's the that's the issue that's more relevant for people who know the game already and are watching mm -hmm. um that those are aspects that would help for players but it doesn't address that the game is just very difficult to comprehend from a viewer perspective from some right. from a new viewer perspective mm. All right. even yesterday i had somebody come in my stream and they're like hey i watched your stream the day before and I had no idea what was going on, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I, I don't advertise my stream to anybody that doesn't play Artifact because it's <laughs> right. not worth watching. It's it's hard and painful to watch because you're just confused." <laughs> it's very true. I think at the very least they would have to improve the I'm gonna call it the mini map up in the top left mm -hmm. because it only shows heroes. For sure. I think it should um, show few more details about the number of cards and the positioning at least like the minimap would have to have more details at least anyways about my hopes and dreams now hear me out one million dollar tournament mm. <laughs> q1 2019 yeah q1 2021 <laughs> um it'll be constructed though Ugh. yeah, yeah. Oh, Ugh. yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe, maybe everything. See, remember, Artifact 2.0 will be the greatest competitive game in history. Here are the ten reasons why. <laughs> oh man, that that article that has become perfect. that article has become like wine. It is <laughs> aging like wine. It is just getting better every time it's getting posted. Just wonderful. <laughs> Um, I actually think because there's a lot of crossover between the Underlords team and the Artifact team. A lot of people from the Artifact team went over to Underlords at least temporarily until like the big update or uh, the 1.0 update. And I'm sure that a lot of them will be migrating back to Artifact now to finish up whatever the Artifact team has been working on. And I think that there's going to be a lot of ideas that will bleed over. For example, I don't know uh, how much you guys are into cosmetics, but I think that board decorations, for example, are a great idea, which I'm surprised other games haven't done already. Like you would think that uh, Hearthstone or even Rune Terror would have way more options but it's Underlords that introduced like the idea of not just picking your board, but also customizing each of your boards like individually with different little tidbits and creeps that you can click on and they all react differently. And I'm sure there's going to be like interactive trash compactors in the future. What do you guys think about that? Do you see a future for that sort of thing in Artifact? Impacts? I mean, it's very clear, even... I'm sorry, Anger, I know you always hated the imps. Not just even, the imps, I just... We don't talk even, about that. Even we don't talk very, about Anger's hate of imps. <laughs> even, but even the very first post, after the end of the long haul, already shows the imps. So I'm sorry, Anger. The imps are here to stay. Look, okay, it's not just the imps. It's also cosmetics as a whole. Oh boy. I, I, I understand that they need to have cosmetics in a free game. In Dota, it's perfect. But as on a fundamental level, like if I look completely besides, like I know that these companies need to make money somehow, it's incredibly scummy. It makes people pay for a free game and the average person isn't going to pay enough to, to pay for their experience in, in, in the game. The, wh who is funding these games are whales, which is these people who can't actually afford it, who spend so much money. Like Literally, some people spend thousands of dollars on cosmetics in Dota. It's incredibly scummy and as a concept, even though I understand it has to be there, I just really don't like it i really on a fundamental level don't like paying for a free game and i think it's incredibly stupid 
Right, so you're just against the uh, whole concept of being able to uh, spend money on cosmetics, even if those cosmetics do not alter gameplay at all. Just because uh, some people have like the psychological need to you know complete a collection or something because there are certain people who just want to like need to spend money yeah it is very exploitative of those types of people mm -hmm. uh, do you have any idea how one could uh, change that so it's less exploitative while still you know keeping the game free to everyone well, for one, like, for example, the battle pass thing, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea. You buy the battle pass initially, and then you you fight your way to earn rewards. I think that's fine. But the problem is that you can buy levels. So what people do is they don't even play the game. They just buy the levels. Right. So, so what it's still do you think... exploitative. Right. But at least the battle pass has you know, a spending cap because there's like a max level, right? And the and an end to possible rewards. Yeah, but that cap is absurdly high. So people can spend mm. thousands of dollars. Look, at I'm not saying in... there shouldn't be cosmetics in the game. I'm just saying right. that I really fucking right. hate it. Well, at least in Underlord, it is very much possible to unlock uh, everything like without spending money. Yeah, like, I, I, I mean, I, I have seen it. There's actually a lot of people who are already reaching the uh, maximum level in Underlords without spending a fortune at all. So hopefully we may see something like that in Artifact. That is what I meant when I said there may be some bleed over effect from the uh, Underlords team. Hopefully there will be some kind of limited battle pass that offers cosmetics to people, offers something for people who spend a little money without allowing people to, like, empty their account into a free game. And one thing I'd like to add is I much prefer funding a game with cosmetics rather mm -hmm. than funding it with paying for the game and paying for the cards. Right. Ideally for me, Artifact would be completely free. You download the game and you have all the cards, all the heroes, and the only mm -hmm. thing you pay for is cosmetics of different cards or even the board or the imps or whatever. Like, I much prefer that to how the monetization is now. So I just want right. to, that on the record. I feel very different from anger about cosmetics. Um, I am a big fan of free games, but not, not because of that they're free, but because they're available to everybody. Um, games are very, like, multi multicultural is the wrong word, but, um, like, global. And so, say, looking at Dota, um, a large percent of the player base is, say, in the Philippines or in uh, South America or the Middle East where um, money has different value than it has for us and where their culture is part of their culture is playing in like internet cafes and stuff yeah. so if a game is free you have those players whereas if you have a 60 dollar price tag on it you may not have those communities we did not have any of those communities in artifact because of the price tag on it like we haven't even touched on the price of artifact currently because we all just know that it's terrible and not something um that worked and so we expect that to change but um, if you have a free game, then then you have it available to everybody, and then those that have money um, can choose to spend it if they want. Um, that was something that really blew my mind, is that Dota had the best financial scheme of any game we've seen, Yeah. Um, where the game was free for so long, and then they had hats you can buy, and then they added started adding in battle passes, and that's where the game has become extremely profitable for them because 25% of battle passes go to the international, which is the largest tournament compared every, to any other, yeah. ev anywhere. Like every the, year. Like the top 100 esports earners are mostly Dota players, even though League has a much bigger following. Um, so, but Valve is making three times what the prize pool is in their pocket, and that's out of choice by the players and charity and stuff. And I mean, not charity, but people are happy to give the money because they played Dota for free and really enjoyed this free product for a long time. 
even myself who kind of refuses to give money to games <laughs> um contributes to that because i i like where the money is going and i like my experience that i get from it and so when people have the choice to pay then they're much more willing to and so it's actually a better financial scheme in the long term i think and that's why it was so weird that they had any sort of price tags on artifact and i think well we already know that that was a large yeah um yeah. aspect of it so uh you saying simon about the um a lot of the underlords team being back in artifact um it makes sense that some of those things will will come back i i do think that the the battle pass is really good or like a more fleshed out version of what dota plus is could be successful which is essentially just battle passes i think dota plus is just poor because there isn't enough content of it yeah and so it ended up just being kind of scammy but um it also like when these don't have any impact on the game that's when people contribute more to them and it makes sense um, there is the small detail of people who have um like mental illness struggles with spending money unnecessarily that it can be um can take advantage of them but i don't think that's the goal i think it's a lesser evil than than charging people in the first place yeah um regardless of if you like or dislike runeterra their financial side of things was actually really amazing um they the the customization in underlords is actually much cooler i hadn't really considered that um but just the fact that free game and then you can buy some you can buy some cards every week and it limits it is frustrating to some people but um was a good balance and and buying the cosmetics is obviously a, a great solution but like the game wasn't the game was capable of being fully competitive without spending any money like i got top 100 worldwide playing free to play and that was yeah. that was really satisfying that i could be competitive while choosing to play it free mm. and so not excluding people that were not in as good of a financial position and so we just really hope that artifact is is a free game and you can choose to spend money and um i think yeah, it's I hope they do that. the way people monetize card games is so bizarre just imagine dota underlords imagine yeah you open up dota underlords and first of all you have to pay for each underlord but not only that you have to pay for each hero you play in underlords like imagine if the game was like that nobody would play it but for some people for some reason people allow it in card games and so i think like, like i said er earlier i much prefer the cosmetic method than the way artifact is now even though i hate right. cosmetics i i much prefer it because it's just it's such a bizarre way to monetize a game i think in artifact like or well in card games in general that it's an outdated um financial plan and yeah. it won't be successful again um but i think the reason that they made that mistake with artifact is they were comparing it to hearthstone and they're comparing it to uh real life card games and both of those are kind of predatory in yeah in how they function it's actually almost unfair if you think about it because valve internally was measuring artifact against the competition in terms of quality mm -hmm. and they thought that people would be prepared to pay a little extra for a little extra quality which isn't like like internally an unreasonable stance to take no but for some but because it's valve and because they touted artifact as being like the revolutionary card game the digital card game that's really taking the whole genre into the next generation people expect it better i think that is like the expectation was so high for artifact that people actually expected something entirely different from your usual card games i remember the first wave of disappointment about artifact when we saw it was actually people just reacting to the board and being like 
uh, oh, so it's just like kind of like Hearthstone on three lanes, so it's just a card game. Even though the whole premise was it would be a card game, but people were already imagining like almost like a Dota board and there's going to be a jungle and there's going to be different currencies and they were like imagining something in the next generation. And I hope that people don't build up their expectations too high for Artifact 2.0 once again. However, I do believe that Valve saw all of this feedback because that's what they mentioned in their under construction post as well. And they've been like taking all of this feedback and sifting through like feedback of months, even the most hate-filled, uh, non-constructive criticism and just gestating it for a year. Mm. So I think that the, that Artifact will be like a very different game and I am looking forward to it and I am hopeful about it. I'm a little fearful about change, just as anybody, I suppose. So, let's plug our stuff. How about that? Art of uh, Anger, where do people find you and your content? I post videos on YouTube on Anger Mania. That's my YouTube channel. And I also tweet at Anger Mania. And I stream on twitch.tv slash anger underscore. Very nice. How about you, Kiwi? Uh, I'm streaming casual games while waiting for Artifact to come back out. But you can find me on Twitch at Kiwi underscore streaming. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Very nice. I, I recommend highly stream... recommend Kiwi yeah, stream. I recommend your stream to everyone. You're a very skilled player, and I'm happy to have your input on the show. I currently don't make content. I'm a lazy bastard because I have to do live stuff, but I do have a uh, Twitter that I've been using more actively now. Which so you, you blocked can... me on. Why did you... We haven't what? talked about this yet. Why did you block me? I did not. Yes, you intentionally... did. You had me blocked. Oh, at... you mean before? Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't me. That was kind of a prank. <laughs> it wasn't me. It really wasn't. <laughs> so anyone, anyways, you can follow me on... Follow, S S Simon, follow Simon on Twitter so he can block you. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't block you. <laughs> so you can follow me at Simon90 on uh, Twitter. And this was our first show, our little test show after the long haul. And we'll see you very soon, as soon as there's going to be more news about Artifact 2.0. Take care. Thank you very much for listening. Peace. <laughs> Peace, it's back. Thank you. Thank you for your business. Come again!